Today we're going to be learning about first declension nouns. And what's different about Latin from many other languages is that not only do verbs have endings, but nouns have endings as well. And these endings are going to change depending on how a noun is used in the sentence. We're going to work with our farmer today. In Latin it's agricola, agricoli, but let's just work with the English for a second. In a sentence, the noun farmer can be used in many different ways. It can be used, as in the top here, the subject, the farmer walks down the street. It can be used as possession. Now in Latin they didn't have apostrophes, so to show possession they say of the farmer can be used as the indirect object. The messenger delivered a letter to the farmer. He's receiving the letter, which is the direct object. It can be used as the direct object itself. The rabid dog bit the farmer. Note that in this case, the farmer is receiving the action of the verb. And it can be the object of a preposition. The dog ran away from the farmer. Here, the farmer is the object of the preposition from. Now all of these uses are broken down into cases, and the case is just another way of naming how the noun is used in the sentence. So we have our nominative case, and that is used when the farmer is the subject of the sentence. Our genitive case is used for possession. Once again, there's no apostrophe s in Latin, so if it's the farmer's house, it's the house of the farmer. The dative case is used when the farmer is the indirect object of the sentence. The accusative case is when the farmer is the direct object of the sentence. And finally, the ablative case is when the farmer is the object of a preposition. Now you're going to need to memorize the names of these cases and their uses. And an easy way to remember the order that they go in is they're in reverse alphabetical order, from ablative all the way back up to nominative. Now let's jump into the Latin itself. Notice up here, our noun for farmer is agricola, agricoli. When you're given a noun in Latin, you'll always be given two forms. The nominative case in the singular, agricola, which means the farmer as the subject, and the genitive case, agricoli, which is of the farmer. Now, we always go to the genitive case when we form this, and we drop off the AE, and that gives us our stem, as you can see here in black, agricol. And to this stem, we're going to add our endings to make it fall in all these different cases. So our nominative ending is an A, and that is the farmer as the subject. Our genitive ending is AE, and that's of the farmer. That's our possession. Our dative ending, also AE, and that shows the indirect object, to or for the farmer. Our accusative ending is am, and that's the farmer as the direct object. And our ablative ending is an A with this line over it, which is called a macron. And that is the farmer as the object of a preposition. Now, of course, farmer can also be pluralized to have farmers. And we're going to have different endings for the plural as well. But let's go through this one more time. Remember, when we have a noun, we're given the nominative up here, agricola, and the genitive, agricoli, in the singular. You always go to the genitive singular to get your stem. You drop off this AE, and then you add your endings. We've already gone over these singular endings, but now we have plural ones also. This AE ending down here for the plural is our nominative plural ending, and that means the farmers. So now you have a plural subject. Our genitive plural ending, arum, is of the farmers. It shows the possession of multiple farmers. Our dative ending, the indirect object, is is, agricolis, to or for the farmers. Our accusative plural ending is as, and that's the farmers as the direct object. And our ablative ending in the plural is is, and that's the farmers as the object of the preposition. Now as you look at this whole chart and start memorizing these endings, you'll notice that a lot of them repeat. You have that AE ending in the genitive and dative singular as well as the nominative plural. And you have this ES ending as the dative and ablative plural. When you're working with these words and you see them in a sentence, it'll be very clear which case they fall under. If you see them in a void, as in agricoli, just that word, it could have multiple cases that it falls under. So now that we've seen all of our endings, let's put it into some use here. 
Here we have two short sentences, Agricola in Wila Est and Femina Agricolae in Wila Est. Over here on the left, we have all of our endings to help you. You do need to memorize these, but seeing we're just starting to work with them, you can have that as a sort of a cheat sheet. So let's work with this first sentence, Agricola in Wila Est. Take a few minutes and try to tell me what case Agricola is in this sentence and what case Wheela is in this sentence. Feel free to pause it if you need more time. All right, now let's review. Note that in this first sentence we have the verb est, which we've already learned, and that is a singular verb. When we have a singular verb, we need a singular subject, and that A ending on Agricola can only be one thing in the singular, and that is the nominative. We also have wheela in this sentence. The ending is a dead giveaway because that A with a macron over it can only be one case, and if you said ablative singular, you are correct. Also note that the preposition that wheela is the object of is in, in the farmhouse. All right, now let's work with our second sentence. Femina agricola in wheela est. I want you to tell me what case and number agricola is. Now remember, this AE ending, as you can see on the left, has three choices. So try to figure out which one makes best sense in a sentence. I'll give you a couple seconds to think it through. Once again, feel free to pause it if you need more time. All right. So, if we look over on our left, that AE ending can be the genitive singular, the dative singular, and the nominative plural. We go to our verb once again in the sentence, which is est. So that rules out it being nominative plural. Is is a singular verb, and so therefore you need a singular subject. You cannot have a plural subject. That leaves us with our genitive and dative singular up here. So let's read the sentence. Femina agricolae in we last. The wife of the farmer is in the farmhouse, or the wife to the farmer is in the farmhouse. Which one of these makes more sense? If you said that the genitive of the farmer makes more sense, you are correct. The wife of the farmer is in the farmhouse is how this sentence should read. That concludes our lesson on the first declension, but let's talk about what our takeaways from this lesson are. There are two very important things that you need to memorize, and the first is the names of your cases and their uses, which are on the left here. The nominative, genitive, dative, accusative, and ablative. You need to memorize these cases and what their use in a sentence is. Secondly, on the right here, you need to memorize your first declension endings. They're in red. Remember, when we're forming this, we always go to the genitive, singular, drop off that AE, and that gives us our stem for the whole word, and that stem as agricole, and that's what we add these endings on to. You can memorize them in any manner you want, but I would suggest that you make some flashcards and come to class prepared.